hi and welcome. Ah, uh, my head is even more full of circus than usual this week because I have just spent three days in Münster in Germany at the circus and space conference upside down. So this video will show you how it panned out. new and contemporary circus. Its aim is to deepen the knowledge obtained at the previous conference, Semiotics of the Circus, which was organized by the research project Circus Wissenschaft at the University of Münster in 2015. After organiser Francisca Trapp has introduced the conference, we get our first keynote speaker, which is semiotician Paul Buisak, who has also worked in circus and been a proprietor himself. The first argument I want to make, which is not very original, many people have done it, but maybe not as close to me, that the circus is a ritual, and ritual in the strong sense of a religious ritual. And actually, I consider, I believe, that the circus is the continuation today of a ooh, religion, a fundamental religion, very primitive religion, and the second point I want to make is that the object of the circus, which is of course in the usual mainstream discourse, the triumph of, of life, etc., etc., is actually a fascination with death. And it is a ritual which focuses on death. And I think there is a lot of evidence to show that this is the case. Three presentations follow. First is Natalia Close talking about myths of the circus ring. I.L. Prost talks about critical theory in contemporary circus, and Veronica Stefanova talks about one of the first contemporary circuses I ever saw, Cirque La Putica. The creators of La Putica, the show, were looking for a way to use circus disciplines to create a complex performance capable of communicating content based on a clearly defined environment and a set of situations. They had to learn how to transform circus arts, movement material, into the language of dramatic arts. We then get a chance to ask questions and uh, after a champagne reception and photography exhibition we head to the GOP. Now GOP is a franchise of variety theatres across Germany, there are seven of them. And my expectation I suppose is that it might be a bit of a kind of a sexy show, that's my experience of cabaret in the UK. Um, but actually rather than being led by sexiness, this show is led by musicality which is really refreshing. There's a big wall of drum screens across the back which gets projections played on them. There are two drum kits either side of the proceeding march stage and um, some of the choreography is based on uh, movement sound waves and stuff like that. Um, people I sort of say, oh, how are you finding the conference after the first day? I'm tired. And I keep running out of battery because I talk too much and I tweet too much and I take too many pictures. And I find it really refreshing to talk to people um, about new ideas surrounding different elements of circus discourse. I mean, that was something that Francisca Trapp said in her opening speech. She says that a circus researcher doesn't just have to travel geographically, they also have to travel through lots of different themes and topics that make up the, the grand uh, circademic field and circus discourse in lots of different facets. It's really easy to get stuck in the trap of sort of repeating the same uh, thoughts, um, especially when you're regularly meeting with the same people and that becomes a sort of shorthand of, the, well, we just talk this, we know this. This is this conference is opening up what those what the potential is of things that you can talk about regarding circus, which is great. And then this evening we went to GOP, and the meal was lovely, and the setting was lovely, and the show was very cool. I've got the little flyer, and what I love about this flyer is it gives a cast list. 
You may have heard me moan before about how it's quite difficult to even find um, a cast list in a programme or on a website for circus shows usually and to have it on the flyer. That just makes me won over in the first place. I wasn't planning to write a review, but I might write a review. Um, we'll see how I feel at the weekend when I've got lots to cover. But yeah, it was it was new circus, I suppose. So it was um, was individual acts tied together with this theme aesthetic of music and rhythms and beats. Um, there was a couple of the there was a couple of the acts that I suppose might fit um, in more in experimental forms in themselves, which is actually very unusual for distinct acts. You'd more likely get a whole show that would be experimental, but acts themselves are um, hard to break out of the classical mould. But um, Jimmy Gonzalez was doing some stuff with some clay at some point, which I've seen in a video online, and it was much better in person. I think he's put a connection between the start and the end compared to the video that I saw. Um, not sure. It, yeah, the this, this act in the second half felt a bit less cohesive than the first half felt. Um, yeah, not sure exactly how that fitted in, apart from... You know, he's in the show and that's his unique act. Um, but the other juggling stuff that he did fitted in really well. There was a bounce juggling rhythm and there was the sort of contact and um, toss patterns. Um, and yeah, there was a dance thing with feathers that was very cool that was um, based on like, tricking moves. Uh, but now I think I'm just trying to draw stuff out that I don't need to because this video is already 11 minutes long and it's only supposed to be part of a overview. Day two is an early start tomorrow, so I'll catch you there. Day two of the conference is themed more around the physics of space. The opening keynote from Philippe Goudard and Sandy Sun is verticality, circularity and gravity. Then we hear from Francisca Trapp and Maran Conrad on semiotics of performance. And then there are speeches from Anna Hendenkreis, Sebastian Belmar, Helen Empling. And because a lot of circus researchers are also involved in practice, we also get to hear from Jimmy Gonzalez. Yeah, they have the, the basic, the juggling. And then my, my goal is always to see how I can move with, with one trick. Uh, naturally, so for example, if I have a, I don't know, this one, and then the trick would be to maybe go behind here, I feel very stopped. I'm like, I cannot really move, and if I start turning, then it's easier. And this already there's some moving. So it's very simple, it's just like this. If I try to do a trick where I have to pass a ball behind, it's very difficult to stay straight all the time, but if I start turning, it's much easier. So, I would say that basically what I do is to make everything easier, instead of <laughs> <laughs> That's how I move in space. You, you just do a trick and it's too complicated to not move. Even if the Russian love to not move, I like to move, so I, I just do something that makes my life easier. And that's how it, it started to move. We then return to theories of verticality, gravity, sense of balance with Agathe Dumond. Stina Degobal talks about the embodied experience of circus, and Katie Gardner offers a case study of Catalyst art show Agmigdala. The final keynote is Patrick LaRue on a dramaturgy project in Montreal, and finally, plans. So we have been sketching uh, roughly the idea of a kind of platform where circus, circus researchers could find whatever they're looking for and could be found as well. In the evening, we return to the tent, which has been taken over again by its proper owners, Cirque Buffon, for their show Lunatique. And I think that means Sleepwalker, because that quickly became apparent that was the main character was Sasha Kobikov, who is a juggler that I last saw at Big Apple Circus with the Sailor Act. But here he is um, yeah, asleep and there's a troop of women who go
guide him and there are some other oddball characters and some fab music. I'll give you a review soon. On day three, the themes are more around political and cultural spaces for circus. So some fascinating stuff. Jonas Eklund talks about Circus Circo and their um, refugee and immigration focused work. Jessica Kendall talks about Africanised bodies in um, China and Europe. But I can't stay for it all. I'm gutted, I have to fly home. At the end of the conference, it was announced that all the papers presented over the last few days and also in the previous edition of the conference, Circus um, Semiotics in 2015, they're all going to be published. Um, I haven't got a date for that yet, but I will keep you posted. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to have a little follow of some of the discussions that came up, there is a storify of all the tweets I was live tweeting throughout the conference. The link is below. Uh, thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel for more and hope to see you soon. Bye!